So I'd like to talk to you about a problem. Um, being an app developer in 2020 is not easy. It might surprise you because we're using our mobile phones more often than we ever have before. And yet, we're using the same apps. We're using our apps more, but they're the same ones. And you might wonder why that is. Primarily, this is driven by network effects. So the more users these apps have, the more users they get. In fact, network effects are driving technology value today. Um, now, if you're a small app developer with a big idea, what are you to do? Um, developers are, or users are not installing apps anymore. But maybe your answer is to plug into these existing apps, use their developer APIs, partner with an app, and find a way to establish yourself in these existing network effects. But as we've seen, apps don't always play nice. Every major tech company today has shut down developer APIs at some point for third-party application developers. And overnight, you can wake up and find that your app doesn't work anymore. So what do we do about this? And what does Bitcoin have to do about this? Well, I think Bitcoin offers us a way out. Because a lot of these problems can be traced back to the client-server model that apps use today. Basically, you have an app, your mobile phone or your web browser, and you connect to a private app's servers that stores your data, hosts it, updates it, and manages it for you. They own your data. But I think in the future, we'll see apps built on Bitcoin. And these apps will be more competitive versus the client-server model because of the same reason that apps today are popular and successful, network effects. But not the network effects you're thinking of, not the network effects of users, the network effects of data. So I think the future will be more open. I'd like you to imagine a social network where you own your data, and you can take it with you outside of the application. That's great for users, but it's also great for the app, because the app then gets this network effect of third-party applications that can plug into this ecosystem. They become more entrenched, and users are happier. So it might take some time, but I think this is where the future is going. And I'm happy today to announce that I've been working on a project called Run that makes this possible. Run is a platform to build apps and tokens on Bitcoin. And it does many things, um, but the way you can think about it is it supercharges your developers building on Bitcoin. And we like to say that it's the Ethereum that works on the Bitcoin that works. So what does Run let you do? Run lets you put many of the pieces of your app on chain, including your code, your views, your APIs, your functions, entire servers can be on chain, your data, and your jigs can be on chain in a way that other people can reuse them. You might wonder what jigs are. Well, the best way I can explain it to you is with a bunch of examples. So jigs are your gift cards. They're your game items. They're your social media posts. They're your tokens. They're your votes. They're your content, your digital pets. What they are is they're your digital property. They're interactive objects that you own. And they're interactive because they're designed from the ground up to work with other jigs. I think in the future, when apps are built with jigs, uh, we'll see users own their data, and developers own their code, and content producers own their content. These are separate jigs, but they'll interact together to create new app experiences. Now, I mentioned they're interactive. There's two kinds of interactivity that I want to talk about today. The first is updating your data over time. So you can imagine that you own a digital pet egg, and maybe you hatch it into a pet dragon. Or maybe a more relevant example, you have a social media post that's yours, and you change the content of it over time. But there's another form of interactivity I'd like to talk about, and that's almost more important uh, when we're dealing on the blockchain and, and many apps are interacting together. And I want you to imagine that a, you're playing a game, and you make the final move, and you're just so happy about it. And so what do you want to do? You want to post it to your friends. You want to share it with them. And so you go on a social network, and in the future, social networks will let you bring this game move and post it there, because it'll be open. But then an advertiser sees that and says, I'd like to reward the game, or the, the person who posted that, uh, for posting that. And so they can interact with this data too. And this open ecosystem enables that to be possible. But we need good protocols to do this. In fact, we need one common language, in my opinion, for all of our data. 
and that enables data to interact together. And so you might wonder, what language do we pick? Well, I'm happy to announce to you today that following in the footsteps of the great blockchains before us, Ethereum, Definity, and Run, we built our own programming language, right? Wrong. Who wants that? You can't find developers. You can't plug into your app. It, you don't get good documentation. You have to learn something new. No, we're not going to build our own programming language. In fact, what we're going to do is something way more useful and is going to correct a lot of the mistakes that are happening with blockchains. We're going to use the language of the web, the most popular programming language out there, JavaScript. <laughs> See, JavaScript runs everywhere. You can use it on any device you have. Most likely, your applications are already using JavaScript today. And it's easy to find developers. It's easy to hire for. And this might surprise you, because you might be saying, why JavaScript? Isn't JavaScript this language that's broken that people don't like? No, it's not. It's gotten very good in the past 10 years. And if you haven't taken a look, take a second look. It's finally been made secure, too. There's been very smart people working very hard to make JavaScript deterministic where it can be used in these smart contract-like applications. So this is what it looks like. To use Run, you include the Run library into your app and write code that looks very similar to any standard JavaScript code you would know today. Any beginner can read that and know what's going on. We have a digital pet dragon, and you can set its name to Empress. But you'll notice that you extend from jig, and that's how you define your digital property. You start with the base idea, and then you add it in. Here's another example. You can launch a token in three lines of code. I don't think you'll find another blockchain on the planet that that's that simple. In this case, we have a song credit. The users could own this. They could take it with them and trade it and sell it. But Run does a lot more than that. And it's going to take me some time to explain it, so I'm going to run through some features and come talk to me afterward if you have more questions about it. So you can define your own behavior. You can link your tokens together. You can give your jigs an icon. You might wonder why this is useful. Well, if we have our data on the blockchain, we're going to want ways to visualize it. And so we make this very easy to do. You can create limited supply items. So let's say you launch uh, you know, a rare game item, or even better, uh, a ticket for an event. You can prove that there's only, say, 1,000 of them and no more. Oh, you can create modding communities. This is really cool. This is one of my favorite parts. So back in the 90s and to early 2000s, we would see a lot of game developers uh, producing independent apps based off of other games. This became harder over time for the same reason that apps became closed down. Uh, but I think blockchains actually enable us to recreate these modding communities of the past and produce interesting apps again. You can pay for your users' transactions. So I think if Bitcoin blockchains are going to succeed in the world, we can't expect every user to have to go to an exchange to buy Bitcoin. It's probably not going to happen. Instead, if Bitcoin is going to be the invisible plumbing for your app, we're going to want ways where apps can pay for their users' transactions. And Run makes this dead simple to do. And if you're a developer, you can test and build on a mock chain. It's an in-memory blockchain that runs on your local machine. Uh, you don't have to connect to the network, and this is perfect for development. And we can do atomic swaps. This has been so hard on other blockchains that we made it really simple. In fact, Bitcoin makes it simple. We just piggyback on what Bitcoin gives us. And now if you're building an open app where developers are adding on to your experience, those developers might want to get paid. This is easy to do with Run2. You can build code that pays users as you use it. And all of this is possible without needing anyone's permission. This is permissionless innovation. People can add to it, and you don't need any servers to run it. So Run can do it all. It runs everywhere. We've made sure it works on mobile, browser, desktop, and server. That's simply because it's JavaScript. But we've also made it safe and secure. So every day, we run tests on all the major browsers and Node.js for servers. And we also have over 97% test coverage. That's a really high number. And this comes to you in an SDK. So you get a JavaScript library, documentation, examples, and an explorer. I won't even have time to show you the explorer today, but it's a fantastic way to look at your data on the blockchain. 
But that's not all. We've built over six lessons. These are beginner-friendly tutorials that anyone can take. In fact, beginners have taken these that have no server experience and built very complex apps. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> and we built over 10 demos. These are your introduction to building a real app using Run. You can see a lot of the pieces, how they come together. That middle example is an atomic swap, but we have 10 others, and we're happy to share with them to anybody who wants them. And over the next year, we're going to be launching several services. They'll be optional. You don't have to, but we think that you're going to find them useful. They include the Connect server. This is a blockchain API that is optimized for Run. The state server. This lets you load other people's jigs very efficiently on your mobile devices. The query server, this is for businesses. This lets you say, how many social media posts were made in the past day? Or how many game items does this person own? You can do that through the query server. And the pay server. The pay server is how businesses can pay for their users' transactions. So we have several teams using Run today. You might have heard of them. CryptoFights is one. True Reviews is another. We have five others. I encourage you to talk to them and ask what has been their experience building with Run. We think it's been great. And if you'd like to build with Run, please get in touch. I would love to share with you our alpha. It's available today. We are in private alpha, though. What we're going to promise is that when we go public, your applications will work for the lifetime that you build them. And to do that, we have to build the protocol that will withstand that future. And so in the next couple months, Run will be free, and it'll be open source and stable just like Bitcoin is. Lastly, we're hiring. We're located down in Silicon Beach, California. And if this interests you, we're looking for a back-end engineer who can help build up our suite of services. So thank you. Hi, it's Hannah Jackson for CoinGeek.com, and I'm here with Brenton Gunning from Run. Hello, lovely to have you. Hello, thank you. Now, first of all, tell me about Run and what you do. Run is a platform to build apps and tokens on Bitcoin. And what it enables is app developers to come into the ecosystem with just JavaScript knowledge and start building very complex apps. These apps are also open in a way where you can build an app and other people can start extending upon it. Run is built for interactivity from the ground up. And we make it very simple. We have several teams using it today, including CryptoFights and True Reviews and five others. And if you're interested, you know, we'd love to have more apps on Run as well. Mm -hmm. Now, you're also very similar to Tolkienized, but there are some differences, so explain those to me. Well, they're both similar in the sense that they're both token systems. That is true. But I think the vision for each of them is very different. With tokenized, we're talking about financial instruments for the most part and regulated securities in some cases. Run is about changing the internet, creating new tokens that are your data on a blockchain. So think like your social media posts or your game items. This is what Run focuses on. And we've really made it very extensible, so you don't need anyone's permission to build on top of it. And I think the future will be the apps that are used today will be built on blockchains using Run. Right. Explain to me the challenges and the pain points when it comes to Bitcoin app development and how Run is seeking to address those. Well, first off, it's very hard to build an app on Bitcoin today. There's, gosh, there's over 180 developer tools. And if you're jumping into the space, I don't know where you would get started, honestly. It's really important that we meet developers where they're already at. And I'm talking about general app developers. So JavaScript is the most popular programming language for app development today. And that's what Run uses too. So we can meet them there. The other part is we don't have good protocols for data to interact. This is really key because I think that's what blockchains are best at is interactive data, interactive applications. And so Run just makes this you know, dead simple and really tries to reduce the barrier to entry for application developers. So what are the benefits of apps that are built on Bitcoin? SV versus the internet? There are many benefits. We can start with immutability, so your data is provable on the blockchain that it existed and it was in a certain state. But actually, I think that's just the start. What we're going to see is apps that let you own your data, that let you take it with you outside the apps, that let you build third-party ecosystems of interactive apps. This kind of rich future of applications is something probably the internet visionaries wanted to happen, but now is finally possible today with a blockchain. And so that's what Run is helping to enable. <laughs>